In this video I want to show you how you can build yourself pagination inside React. And no, you should not look for libraries, it is not that difficult and you can manage it in 10 minutes. So here I already have a generated React application with an empty app. And the first question is what do we need to render inside and how our pagination will work. And I really think that pagination is fine to just be a single component with some properties. So let's say that inside we have our pagination component that we will create in a second. And first of all we must provide inside a current page. Why do we need current page? Because we must highlight inside our pagination what page is active, nothing more. And also you might want to disable current page. After this we must get here a total and a limit. For example total from the backend you might get 500 items. Which actually means on the backend in total you have 500 posts. But it doesn't mean that we are getting all 500 of them. We are getting here a limit or per page. And I will name it limit. And let's say we are rendering on the screen 20. Which actually means we are on the first page. Then we have our items from 0 to 20. Then the next page will be from 20 to 40 and so on. And essentially total and limit is enough information for us to render pagination. And we need this information to know how many pages we must render here. And the last thing that we need here is a change event. And actually change will happen every single time when we select specific page inside pagination. In this case here we want to get a callback in our parent, for example inside app, and then fetch some new data for that specific page. This is why here we can name it on page change and this is a function and we will get back our page and then we want to call some function. The question is now what do we need to call here? And actually it makes a lot of sense to store our current page outside of the pagination inside our state. So let's create now here our current page and obviously set current page because we want to use here React hooks which means you state and here initial state will be 1 because by default the first page must be activated. And here we are passing inside our current page and here as a callback we can call set current page and we are providing inside our page. And essentially this is all props that you need in order to build pagination. So we have here current page for example 1 by default, total 500, limit 20 and our callback on page change where we are given the page that was activated inside. Now here on the top I want to import directly this pagination that we will create in a second from file pagination. And now here I want to create new file pagination.js. And actually before we will start to implement this component I want to share with you CSS. And we won't write any CSS for our pagination, I already prepared it for you. This is why you can take it from the description box below, there is a source code of this project. And actually as you can see here this is pagination CSS and we have lots of classes here that we will use inside our component. For example pagination, page item and here we have page link. Now what we must do inside our index.js we must import this CSS file and it will be pagination CSS. Another way would be to import it directly inside our pagination component. So let's jump inside our pagination component and here we want to export our new component which is called pagination. Now let's create this component pagination and here we already know what props we are getting so we can directly destructure them. First of all we are getting here current page, then total, limit and also on page change callback. Now here let's just return some div to test if it's working. So I will render here word pagination and will jump inside browser. As you can see here the word pagination was rendered which actually means this component is correctly binded. The next step would be to know how many pages we must render in total. This is why here let's create a property pages count and here we can use math sale and inside we are providing total divide on limit. Why we are doing like that? Because actually total is for example 500 and our limit is 20. Which means we will get here the number of pages and we are using here math sale to make our count bigger which actually means if we have for example 501 page this means we want to create one more page. Let's console log it here and check if it's working. So here is our pages count property. I'm reloading the page and we are getting here inside console pages count 25 which is totally correct. 
And now here is an interesting point, we want to render all our 25 pages starting from 1 and to 25. How we can do that? Actually we must map through the array from 1 to 25, but there is no function inside JavaScript to generate an array from one number to another. This is why actually I highly recommend you to build an additional helper and use it everywhere and typically you will call it range. So what we can do here, we can write array 25, this is our end. As you can see it creates an array with 25 empty elements. Now here I will write keys and as you can see we are getting an array iterator and now we can spread this result inside an array and we are getting a nice array from 0 to 24. But this is not what we want, typically the range function must start from some number and go to some another number, which actually means here we can apply map and simply get every single element and here we can use element plus and here will be our starting point. For example in our case we are starting from the first page, this is why here I can put 1 and we are getting a nice array from 1 to 25. And this is how you typically implement a range function. So normally you will put it inside utilities and use across your application, but for now I will simply create it here. So the range function is a function where we are getting our start and end and we will simply return this result. So here array not 25 but end and here element plus start. And with that being said our range function is implemented. And now we can check if it's working here, we can create our pages array where we are calling our range function from 1 to our pages count. Now I want to console lock here pages so we can check if it's working. I am reloading the page and we are getting here our pages count 25 and here is our array from 1 to 25. And now we just need to map through every single number here and render it on the screen. This is why we can directly write our markup. So here inside let's create a ul with class name pagination. Now inside our ul we can map through our pages and we are getting here inside access to every single page and inside we want to render additional component. Why is that? Because actually it makes a lot of sense to simplify our component by creating additional component inside. And even if we want still to use just a single pagination outside, we can use several components here. This is why here actually I want to create pagination item. And the question is now what do we need to render inside? First of all we must get here page that we want to render, secondly we must provide inside a key because we are inside map and here we can say page because it is unique, also we must use here current page to highlight it and disable and it will be current page from the props and the last one on page change it is also from the props. So this is how our pagination item will look like, this is simply a map through our array where inside we are calling this additional component that we can create here on the top. So our pagination item is just a component where we are getting first of all our page, then current page and then on page change. And actually now here I want to install additional library and we could use it without additional library and just implement concatenating strings by ourselves, but I just want to show you the possibility. And actually this library is called class names, it is super popular for React and what it does it concatenates correctly classes. And actually this sounds really easy, but typically you want to concatenate them based on true or false and it is much cleaner than writing ternary operators inside the string to get a string of our classes. This is why here I want to jump inside console and install this package, so yarn add class names. Now we can jump back inside our component and here on the top of the file we can import class names from class names. And what we want to return inside our pagination is actually a lee. So here we will have our lee with span inside. So for our span we can apply the class name page link and we want to render the page of this pagination item inside our span. But here with the lee it is different, here we want dynamical classes, this is exactly why do we need class names. So here on the top let's create lee classes and here we can call this class name method. And actually here typically we want to provide an object and here we can say page item, this is the class that must be there always, this is why here we simply set it true. But actually we must render an active class additionally when our page is current page, so actually here page 
equals current page. And as you can see, this logic is much better than trying to concatenate our styles like page item. Then here inside you want to write ternary operator like page equals current page. Then you are rendering here active. In another case, you have here empty string. This is unreadable. This is why class names is so awesome. You are getting back a nice string, but this code is super readable. And now inside our Lee, we can provide class name, and in our case, it will be Lee classes. And also, we must call here our on click event. And what do we want to provide here? We want to provide inside our on page change the page that we are getting inside our pagination item. So here we have our map, here we are rendering our pagination item, and this is our component where inside we have Lee and span, and our on click event, which we are bubbling to the top. And here are our classes for Lee, and here we are rendering our page. So let's check if it's working. Here we don't have any errors inside our build, and let's jump inside browser. And as you can see, actually it works, we can see all our elements from 1 to 25. But the main point is there is no CSS, we must bind it. This is why here on the top, inside this component, we can just import our CSS from file pagination CSS. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page and we're getting here nice implemented pagination. So we're here on the first page and as you can see, it is disabled. And we can check this page and here we're getting pagination, page item, and here we have this class active. And actually we have this class active here from this condition. And inside we are rendering our page link 1, which actually means the whole pagination is just a mapping through our array with numbers. Now here we can click on any element and it is directly changed. Why is that? Because here we are calling our on page change. This is this on page change which is in props. Now here we are going inside our app.js and here we are calling our set current page which changes our state which is our current page. As you can see, it is not that difficult to implement pagination inside React. And actually, if you are interested to implement select inside React, make sure to check this video also.